Good evening, fellas. Today, tragedy has struck. I've lost me fucking glasses. I won't be wearing them for this video, and probably another one, but it is what it is. I feel like Clark Kent, Superman right now. I feel like a fucking idiot because now, now, you don't know who I am still because I have glasses on. If I were to take them off, you would immediately know, immediately know who I was. So I'm not going to do that. Unless it hurts my eyes too much because these are meant for, for me to see from afar. And I'm not looking anything from afar, so let's get straight to the fucking video. Let's get straight to the juicy content, and that is girls. Everyone, every single dude wants to know more about girls, and to be honest, same. Now, I'm not here to tell you too much about it because I don't know too much about it myself. I don't have that much experience, and to be honest, I am trying to improve so I can get more experience. And... Um, that's just a sleazy way to just uh, a little bit, a more um, complex way to just say I want to get I want to get laid. Now, let me tell you some stuff of uh, some mistakes I've made, and the way I would do I would try to fix that now, or not fix it, but how I would do better in the next situation because that's basically what everyone wants to do. We've all made some small mistake which is maybe you didn't approach that girl that you saw once. But next time you might want to you might do that because you learn from your mistakes. So, I'll tell you some moments in which I've fucked up. And that is basically the whole uh first section I think, and then we'll move on to some other stuff. So, the first time I really fucked up with a girl was when I was like 13. And this is the most egregious one of them all because she literally came up to me, grabbed me by the fucking by my hoodie, I think, she pushed me against the wall, and, and I don't know, she said something, and which she basically was just saying, I like you, and I want to, I don't know, uh, go on a date or some shit. However, I was doing more important shit, which was, I was playing tag, and when you're 13 years old, tag is like the most important sport of them all, you want to be, you want to fucking beat them all, man. So I, I made the dumb mistake to just brush her aside, I ain't got time for these hoes, man. <laughs> And I just kept playing fucking uh, tag, and I fucked it up. It was, I don't know, it was a stupid mistake, and basically, that's a pretty easy mistake to to overcome when you're, like, young. And, like, if you just know that you shouldn't do that, you just won't. But I, I fucked up in that. If you ever, if, a, if a girl ever does that to you, you know, just go up, just, just go with her, man. It's as easy as that. Now, uh, the, the following examples, I suppose, um aren't that, like, obvious. But there are certainly uh, examples that or uh, circumstances which most guys would find themselves in, and I think that if I was a younger version of myself and I heard this, I would have really appreciated it, because most guys are just say, saying, like, you know, you should do a cold approaching. And it's like, okay, yes, I think that's a very valuable way to uh, get over the fear of approaching people. But... Uh, <laughs> It's not the most time effective because, look, if, if you just want to get laid, yeah, you're going to make time to cold approach. That, that's something that um, more plates, more dates said once, that he would waste a lot of time doing that shit. He would just go to the mall and try to talk to girls and he would waste like two hours or three hours doing that, which is not a bad, like, it's a pretty productive thing to do, like, talk to girls and get over that fucking fear. But if you're doing other shit, then uh, sometimes you don't have time to do that. So naturally, just by existing, you're going to come across women who you're attracted to and maybe they're attracted to you. Now, one instance of that was when I went to the gym once and I left. Uh, there was this girl standing outside talking to another girl and we made eye contact. Now we held eye contact for like five seconds until I walked past her because she was standing here and I just walked past her and It felt wrong to not have approached her Although although she was talking to another or she was being talked to I don't know uh, I think it, eye contact is a really Easy way to Just slide in and just be like Yo, did we just have a moment or some shit? You just say some some stupid shit that maybe makes them laugh or whatever. And basically, it's the way I always write it down is 
you kind of want an opening sentence that is not like a joke, but kind of like something to break the ice. Um, and then you uh, react to the way they reacted to you. So if they kind of don't want to talk to you, then you know that they're not interested in you. So that was mistake number one. I, I We made eye contact and I didn't fucking react. That also happened another time in the mall, but I wasn't really attracted to the girl. I just happened to have made eye contact. And I, and I held it, so... Uh, but I think, like, if you just make eye contact and they look at you again, maybe you see each other, like, a little while later, yeah, approach them. Because if they're looking at you, they're probably interested in... Um, yeah, it's something to keep a... You know, just, just keep in mind. The other time was... These two were more recent. So one time... This once was with a... And that's also, that's also something that's really uh, interesting to me because... Depending on the type of girl you look at, maybe you see some some bad bitch. You know, like sometimes you see some 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 like really hot women, and you make on eye contact, and you're kind of scared of them. It's like why 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 are you scared? It's because you're insecure. I was insecure for sure. Now there's this bad bitch in the in the gym, like big booty, you know, thick thighs, everything, you know, the whole package. She's also she's also fucking yoked as fuck, but. Uh, on Monday she was hitting legs and I was also hitting legs and uh, she finished first. She finished uh, her session first and she was in the in the lockers. Like my gym is a little, I don't know, open I suppose where there's like a little section where you can just have where you just have lockers and it's typically for people who are already dressed for with their gym clothes. So you usually go there and you just put your your uh, bag and your jacket into a locker and then you just go into the, you know, do your workout. So you're not actually getting naked there. However, uh, yeah. I, so she went there first, and then I, I didn't realize that, and I just finished my my doing my shit, and then I, uh, I went to the lockers to get ready. And basically, the situation was that she was she was here, and there was a wall behind her, the wall of lockers, and then I stood here, kind of by the exit, because she's standing here. The lockers are here, and then there's a little bench here, and I'm here getting uh, changed with my, uh, you know, putting my jacket on and everything. And then the exit is that way. <sighs> now, there's nothing behind me. There's nothing interesting going on. There's not a class. There's not a, a weight room or anything. There's nothing going on. But I, I could sense that I was I was putting my shit on the bench. And I could sense that she was looking at me in my direction. But you could sense it. You know, you feel it in your, in your gut that someone's looking at you. Now... Some, some guys don't like to trust their guts or their feelings. And in my opinion, that's a stupid mistake because we've evolved in a way that we kind of, we used to depend on them sometimes. So it's stupid, in my opinion, to ignore them. They're, they, they, you have them for a reason. You, you feel that shit for a reason. And I personally believe that if I were, if I were to have looked to her, we would have made eye contact and, and I, someone would have look, looked away. But she was, I felt that she was looking at me, but I was looking at the bench. And then, um, that, that was the mistake, basically. I felt that she was looking at me in my direction, and I didn't fucking look at her. Now, I, sa I saw that she was, she also hit legs the same day. And I also hit legs the same day, and I could have just asked, like, good leg day? That's as easy, like, she would have answered to me, and uh, I wouldn't have, you know, like, the thing is about the gym, you don't want to, like, let them know that you want to fuck them immediately. That's a little weird, because it can make everything awkward, and since you're going to be seeing them there every day, or not every day, but here and there, it's going to be awkward. You're not, that's why you don't fucking try to um, have sex with your colleagues, because you're going to see them every day, and it's awkward if they say no, you know? Kind of like that. But something, you know, casual or something simple like, hey, good leg day. Uh, yeah, oh, no, I hope I'm not too sore tomorrow. <laughs> you know, that dumb shit, you know. And just at, and then just ask them for their name and then you give it your name and then they're like, hey, hope I see you next Monday. And then you say goodbye. That's basically it. That's the mistake I made. I didn't do that. I didn't look at them. That's basically the whole mistakes. The, that's the whole... Um, uh, sequence of events that I keep repeating. I, I, I know they want to look, 
they talk to me, or I suppose I, I think they're looking for my uh, attention, or even if they're not, I can just barge in and be like, yo, what's up, talk to me, bitch, and that's it. That's basically it, I don't do that. That's, that's the whole mistake I'm committing, I'm not. Maybe I'm making eye contact, but I'm not uh, doubling down on making a, a connection with them. And that's the same with the other girl. We made eye contact and we were at the gym and she kind of, I don't know, it seemed super weird to me because I was working out and, there, and there's a mirror in front of me so I see myself and there's a bunch of benches like the whole, the day was, the gym was completely empty and she picked the bench in front of me. Now, I don't know, man, it, it, that's the type of shit that I don't like to think about because it's like, Oh, maybe she listened to me, but it's like, oh, maybe she wasn't, and she just wanted to work out or whatever. You know, you can make a bunch of fucking ideas in your mind, but the eyes, in my opinion, are really the most important thing. If they're looking at you, and you look at them, and maybe she looks away or whatever, uh, yeah, it's like, pretty obvious. There's also in university, there's like, there was this girl who I, I saw in the same row, and I said hello, and she, she was like, oh, hey. And then, or I, I didn't. I don't think I even said hello. I think I just said, uh, and then she just went like, and then, or, or she didn't even say do that. She just kind of looked, and then she kind of smiled, while while she was looking away. So I suppose that if you see those little moments in which they are happy to see you, bro, it's right there. The door is open for you. Just say something. There, you just, just do something, man. It's not that hard. This video, I think this is really just me talking to myself. I don't think it's really anything, but the the main lesson that I just thought about right now is like, girls are not robots. They're not robots. They're not. They have feelings. They they also want to have sex. They also want to get to know guys, and and you know, usually girls don't. Uh, do what the first first girl did where they just tell you that they like you because they're seen as whores or whatever and it's like so you, you as a dude you have to be the initiator and and try to fucking do something and that's basically it man that, that just have the balls to do it and that's also something I, I think i heard from um bill burr that i don't know if you, i think he was talking about black women but basically women kind of give off their energy and when you sense it, it's like they're telling you to be a man. Like, I'm here. I'm a woman. You're a man. Do something about it. <laughs> you know, talk to me. <laughs> talk to me, you fucking pussy. And so I, I thought. I think like that's pretty. That's pretty much it. Like, women kind of dare you to talk to them. And if you don't, if you don't, when you when they gave you signals, you're kind of a pussy in my. So I, I think I, I think I, I was a pussy for not talking to any of them. And I'm trying to fix that. <laughs> now out of the <laughs> out of the girls talk, which is uh super uh, not uncomfortable for me, but I don't know that much, so I don't like to talk out of my ass. Um In terms of well it's also related to girls, I suppose, insecurities, man. Um I suppose that a good way to know if you're insecure is the way you sing in the car with your family. Now, if you have a very abusive family, then you're not gonna, and they don't like you singing, then you're not gonna sing it. That's fine. But if you're kind of like me, you know, I don't dance that much. Even when I'm alone, I I, just, I feel like it's awkward. Also, singing like I don't sing that loud. Maybe I only sing when I'm completely alone and there's like no way anyone can hear me. But when I'm in the car. Uh, look, I, I wrote here, I get uncomfortable when my dad gets hyped up while playing music in, while we're driving. It's because I want to f fit in or be normal by being quiet, I'm, I'm fitting in. And my dad doesn't give a fuck and, si and sings and has a fun time. So, fuck being normal and fitting in, I should be more like my dad when he's social. I also sing really quietly not to be noticed and that makes me weak. So my dad, when he's social, he's he's quite loud, he's quite like... You know, he's very open and like, it's a very um, attractive personality trait to have to just be super comfortable in, in uh, social s situations, but I'm not like that. Now, apparently my dad also wasn't like himself when he was younger, so 
um, I think like I can become like him for sure. Because I'm, I'm honestly quite open when I'm with friends. But I'm not open just normally. <sighs> so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, as of, as of singing in the car, I think it's pretty good uh, points I have. I've noticed uh, over the month over the past months if you if you have music that everyone likes to listen to and you know the lyrics but you sing them like I, la, 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 la. I don't know how I don't know fucking lyrics I don't remember any of them but you just start singing but it's very quiet it's like if you, as if it's slower than uh, it's not as loud as if you were talking it's it's more quiet than your talking voice in my opinion, that means you're insecure. I'm insecure about that. You know, I, I'm insecure of being heard. That's probably a, a thing that I need to work on. Um, I need to speak louder with more balls <laughs> and, while being sure of myself. If, you're, if you are not sure of yourself, nobody will pay attention to you. And that's, you know, everyone knows that. Everyone understands that subconsciously. If some fucking dude is talking and he doesn't know what the fuck he's like, he's not confident in himself, nobody really pays attention to him. They only really pay attention to those to those guys because they know something that other people don't, or they're much much smarter or whatever. So you pay attention to them because of their uh, intellect or their ability, not really f because the way they speak. You know, the way that you speak is uh, very important. Now uh, I wrote some uh, things about like waking up late and shit. It's a pretty, it's a pretty good thing to write down in your journal if you wake up late, repeat it repeatedly. It's good to write it down and, and ask yourself why that happens. Uh, something I'm quite proud of is, uh, well, since I've been hitting the gym, I honestly don't know since when I've been hitting the gym because there was a moment when I couldn't go to the gym at all because of COVID, and then I, I think from December I could go, but I'm not sure. But uh, I went home. To my home in uh, in another town, and that one has a decent mirror. The one here doesn't let me see my whole physique, and uh, so I, I took my shirt off and I was like, "Damn, I look fucking sick." And I was only have two months of work or some shit, and yeah, man. If you still don't go to the gym, you should totally go, man. It it totally makes you be different. Um, I also have another theory that. It says, I have a feeling that working out in cold showers makes you look manlier. That's also something that I'm, I'm making a video about the cold showers and how to take them for life. Because I've been taking them since October, every day. Every time I shower, it's a cold shower. I don't shower every day because sometimes you don't really need to shower. You don't really do anything. You don't sweat. You don't, you're not nasty. But, uh, you know, if, you, if I have to shower, which I normally have to, <laughs> um... It's, it's a cold shower, and uh, I only really take warm showers when it's really late at night. If it's 10 p.m., it's a, it's a, it's a warm shower, you know, because I don't want to be in bed super super awake. But that's a, that's a topic for another video. The reason for, uh, for that theory is because in cold, for uh, working out in cold showers, making you look manlier, is because in cold showers, you mew crazy hard sometimes. You breathe through your fucking nose. And during workouts, you tend to bite down. It also trains your neck, I suppose. Um, but not really. Uh, unless you train it directly, it doesn't really do anything. But um, I also need to. Re uh, I also use this a lot to recognize patterns, and that's something that you need to fucking do as well. Like, we live off of patterns, and every time I, because I live in, a, in I live in a city right now by myself because I'm in I'm, I'm in school. But on the weekends, I often go to my house in the town with my family. Uh, but I've noticed that I regress when I'm at home. I stay up late, watch YouTube, skip workouts, eat junk food, and wake up late. I don't progress. I am here while I'm here, uh, so I have to be harder on myself. Don't be a pussy. Maintain the good habits, and I will be rewarded. Yeah, man, that's that's basically it. I I meditate. I used to meditate. Uh, like when I wrote this, I was meditating for a whole week. I went to the on the weekends. I went to my house. Completely stopped for the fucking weekend. I didn't work out. I didn't fucking do anything. I I overindulged in uh, in YouTube and I don't know. It's a mess. It's, it was a mess, and I don't know why I do that. I think it's because of form. It's a form of relaxation, but it's not. It's not gonna 
get me anywhere. Um, you also need to, in, in the topic, in the topic of recognizing patterns, uh, I wrote down here. I realize that I need to keep my composure and not get angry so fast. Angry men are weak. Men that shout and fight about anything are weak. I need to break the cycle of significant trauma uh, in my family. In media, uh, in media, who who is everyone most afraid of? The guy that makes a fuss about everything, or the man who's always calm and only gets angry when he needs to. But then I realized, like, well, you don't. If you, if in my opinion, that if if you lose control of your emotions, you lost in a way. You, you, I feel like by just allowing your emotions to take over, you, you fucked up. So yeah, I don't know. I, I've I've had a, a experience with being angry a lot. I used to be angry all the time, and um, not. And I suppose that now I'm more relaxed, and I'm trying to be. Uh, not happier because that's not a goal of mine like oh be happy that in my opinion that's a result of hard work or I don't know whatever but uh, what I'm trying to be is understand uh, what's happening and by understanding what's happening I would like to take the most logical path because emotional uh, instability is pretty stupid to me I don't know it's I, I if I if I had a daughter, let's say, if I had a daughter and her boyfriend was super emotional and got angry, like, at the first joke someone made about him, I would tell her that he's not he's not for her. And that's true, like, if you're very emotional, you're fucking weak. Because you cannot control your fucking yourself, you know? Because you're the one that feels the emotions, so if you cannot control what you do about the emotions, then can you really control yourself? And I don't think so. So I'm trying to not become angry because the one person that makes me angry, I, mean, I don't know if she makes me angry. I think it's my sister makes me a little bit angry, but it's not her fault. I think it's more to do with with her because I compare her character and my character and we're completely different, even though we grew up under the same uh, you know, supervision of my parents, you know. I, I, I'm not super, um, I don't talk back to my parents a lot, I don't like to fight a lot with them, but my sister likes to fight a lot and she talks back to them, and that pisses me off, and I don't know, I don't know, I'm just trying not to get pissed at her, and that's something I have to work on, and you have to figure out what really pisses you off about it, because I've had moments where I'm talking to her and I'm completely fine and I don't feel any anger, but then she does one thing and that pisses me, that's the one thing that pisses me off. And I suppose that to me that was when my, my sister would talk back to my mom or like insult her. Because you can talk back to your parents. In my opinion, that's something that sometimes you need to do. Like you're not just going to sh shut up for the whole fucking time you're, you're living with them. You have to talk back to them at one point or another. But when you insult them for no reason, that's like, uh, and that's not to discredit her, her um, character because she's a very good person. It's just that she doesn't know that yet her she hasn't figured that out that insulting people really doesn't solve anything and um, that that's the one thing that pisses me off and so I have to realize like okay that's what makes me angry now how can I fix that or okay it makes me angry now how am I going to react because it's okay to feel angry but is it okay to react on that anger I don't think it's okay I don't think it's okay to shout because you're angry. I don't think it's okay to, I don't know, uh, you know, later down the line, if, I, if, I, if I'm not to fix this, you know, it could get out of hand in some time. You know, let's say you're drunk or and you're very emotional. You could hit your wife. And it's like, you, no one wants that. So it's like, you need to figure this shit out on your own because it's, it's very dependent on everyone. My sister makes me angry. Or some, some stuff about my sister makes me angry, but it's not only uh, her that makes me angry, other things make me angry. And you have to figure out what makes you angry and how to fix that, or how to react properly. <sighs> and I think the last thing of today is something that... um. 
I recently watched from uh, Natural Hypertrophy, but I also wrote this shit months ago. I, well, not, not months ago. I wrote it on the 13th of uh, February. I can never say that month properly. I always feel stupid when I'm saying it. Uh, natural Hypertrophy is... Uh, he, he made a video about... Uh, what's his fucking... The, the, guy, the fat guy that's like... Kriakos, I think. Well, I don't know. The guy that shouts and is very fat. But uh, he wrote a, a video. He made a video about embrace the, seek the the difficult, or embrace the difficult or some shit. It's basically just take challenges because they they improve your character. Now I wrote down here. God gave me a challenge. The challenge to win. Uh, to what? To go to uni. Uh, do something I didn't give a fuck about in the time. Like now I care about it a little bit more. Because I embraced the challenge and now I care about it. So it, God gave me the challenge to go to university, start YouTube, and and do other shit and, and improve myself. At first I didn't accept the challenge, but now I use it as motivation and something to push me. I used to view university as a weight that would drag me down and something I hated doing and I resented the, the fact that I had to go. And I didn't accept that and it fucked me up a little bit but um i think the challenge is the the challenge was too big for me at the moment like when the when i first started it was a, a huge challenge for me but now it it's not as bad i think i can i can complete the challenge without a fucking problem i think because i know what i'm capable of capable of and i know that university is really not that that bad if you you know uh, <laughs> you straighten out um, no matter how I see it it's all positive either I get a career or uh, get famous or and rich out of YouTube you know um, or I improve other people's lives you know maybe you learn something out of it I, I, I see always I always use money as like a, a quick little example but really YouTube can, can bring a lot of benefit, not only to me, but to many other people. And maybe you, no, my friend, who, who was the only one that watched my video, uh, maybe he learned something from, from these videos. Uh, but one way or another, I will make my future the best for future me. That doesn't make sense. But basically, by just going to university, I either learn something, I learn how to work hard, I know how, I learn how to become disciplined with my time, I know how to um, properly uh, manage my... My resources, resources being time, energy, uh, basically it. <laughs> and um, maybe I get a career out of it. Maybe I make friends. Maybe I meet, I don't know, the love of my life. Whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. But I'll, eventually I get something out of it. And it's something that, uh, you know, that is pretty interesting to me. Because no matter, if you do hard shit, you get pretty good returns. Now, if the fucking thing is just hard for no reason, then you don't really get much. But for example, if you go to the gym, if you take cold showers, even when you don't fucking want to. If you go to university, even though you don't want to study. If you uh, accept responsibility for things that you don't really want to accept responsibility for, it makes you a stronger individual. It just is how it is. You learn to deal with it and you move on. And I think that uh, for for the last thing I said, that was the last thing, but just a quick little ender. Um, I wrote down here on the 15th of uh, February, one day after uh, Valentine's Day. He, this happened on Valentine's Day, but I didn't write it down because I didn't have time. Uh, I wrote, showing love is while, while someone is alive is much better than showing love after they're dead, <laughs> once they die. I called my mom and sister for Valentine's Day, and apparently mom almost cried. My dad told me to do it. My, my dad had told me, hey, you should call, you need to call your mom. You have to call your mom on Valentine's Day. Even if you get no pussy, you gotta call your mom and tell him that, tell him that she's the best mom and whatever, you know, all that, all that shit, all that jazz. Uh, apparently my mom almost cried. I, I wasn't there, but... My dad told me, like, I don't know what the fuck you said, man, but that shit, she made, it made her cry. Um, I also took it upon myself to call my grandma 
on my dad's side because my my grandma on my mom's side wasn't picking up. And I talked to her with her a bit and she also told me how grateful she was to receive my call and to talk to me. So I have to do it more often. I haven't done it since because I don't know many people. Like, who am I going to talk to? My family, I haven't talked to them for my my cousins and shit. I haven't talked to them for like fucking years because I don't live in the same country, in the same continent. <laughs> so, yeah, I, mean, I think that's something that you should do. Like, if you have more contact with your uh, family, like grandparents and shit, talk to them, bro. Like, they need someone to talk to. And who's better to talk to than family? Because family is everything. I learned that shit from, from uh, Fast and the Furious, man. Yeah, I think that's uh, that I'm gonna end the video there. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you, I don't know, maybe think, I don't know, have any ideas, leave them in the comments. I'll, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.